we are a very specially chosen group who is going to receive a special blessing this night. Father is going to pray over all of you today. Say hallelujah. 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 So the Lord is welcoming each one of you. Luke 9, 11, Jesus welcomed them, taught them about the kingdom and healed all those who are in need of healing. Each day when you come before the Lord, He is welcoming, especially on a on a personal basis, He is welcoming you to teach you about the kingdom and to heal us. Each time you learn something new about the kingdom, healing comes. Because through the word of God, what comes to us is healing. Healing in mind, body and soul. Say hallelujah. We need healing in all these three areas and He is there to give us. And you know, as we are preparing for the Pentecost, now only few days left for Pentecost. And Pentecost is the greatest feast ever celebrated in the church, you know. And that is the day when the Spirit of God has come down solemnly and uh, the birth of the church, we know. From around the world, the people had gathered together and Pentecost had a very special effect on all of them, all the uh, apostles and uh, one of the most beautiful things that Pentecost brought to them is this, they became fearless. Otherwise, people were all full of fear. And you know, fear, fear is something that destroys all the blessings. That is why so many times in the Bible, fear not. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. And you know, if fear is there, what will happen, you know? Jerem, uh, Job 3.25, whatever you are afraid will come true. That is why. Jis baak ka muche dar tha, ohi mere upar bhi tha. Whatever I was afraid came true. So if you are afraid of something, it will come. It will come upon you. See, I had a, 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 a boy who was with me many years. Now he's a great preacher. His name is Joshi. He was from Vainad in Kerala. He from uh, 2002 he had been with us singing and uh, later he became a good preacher. Now he conducts retreats all around. He is married and now he has five children. So uh, a, a wonderful son of God, so uh, full of joy. So he was speaking about his uncle, okay. This uncle once met with uh, uh, on accident, you know, when he was traveling in the bus. So, bus collided with another bus and uh, he got saved, but uh, there was a fear, undue, unreasonable fear always. So, uh, he would always say, it is very dangerous to travel by bus, okay, don't go as much as possible, don't travel by bus. And uh, if you go by bus, you know, any time, thing can happen. He will go on telling like that. After that, he used to say that even if you have to travel by bus, Make sure you don't sit in front because that time he was in the front. And so he said, you should go and sit behind someone like that. So that you may save yourself. And one day it so happened, he was sitting behind and another bus came from behind and got like that. <laughs> it happened. That time also he got saved but fear increased again. And he would go on saying, you know, it is very dangerous. I am telling you personal, from my personal experience, don't travel by bus, okay? Even if you want to travel, if there is no other way, then travel. But make sure you don't sit in front and also on behind also. Don't sit behind also. Sit somewhere in the middle place so that you be saved like that. One day he was sitting. Uh, in the middle, <laughs> like that, and you know, it really happened, okay, it's not a joke, it really happened. And he would not sit in the side also. So, he was sitting in another place, and uh, on another man was sitting in the side, and he, by mistake, kept his hand like this, okay. And he slept off. So, while another vehicle overtaking, it went and he exactly the place where he was, like that. And his hand got damaged, like that. So after that he stopped, that was the last day he was. So he would say, don't travel by bus at all, you know. So he would not travel by bus. So 
from Vainad, you know, in uh, Kerala, after that, they, the family had to go for a marriage in Todugura side, in uh, little Kerala. So, all were going with the bus because, but he said, no, 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 don't go. Then he said he will go by his uh, motorcycle. So it's a long distance. He had a bike. He said, I will go by. And the wife and children all said, you know, Papa, why bike? You know, it's a very long distance. You know, we are all going by bus. No, 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 you do not know how it is like, you know, how dangerous it is like that. So he went with uh, this one and uh, he had an accident with the bus and died. Yeah. So, what I want to tell is, this is not a simple thing. You know, if fear is there, whatever you are afraid will come true. Because you lose the protection. Then the spirit of fear will rule. Whatever you are afraid will get authority to come. You know, the evil one will get authority to bring whatever you are afraid. That's why when you are afraid, he was, when Peter was afraid, he was going down. Jo darta hai, or dubta hai. Because he lose the protection. Though he was in front of the Lord. When he was afraid, the power of the Lord is not working on him. He is going down. That's why. Even though you are in front of the Lord. Even though you, you, you pray and you have faith. But if fear is there, you will lose grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And fear brings bondage. Fear brings bondage. If fear is there... So, some people have always fear and when fear is there, you will have uh, words of fear. Words of fear is very dangerous. Say hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. So, some people always will have words of fear, words of negative thoughts, words of failure. Oh, I will not be able to do anything. I cannot do this and everything is wrong. Nobody is good. Only I. Always will be complaining about everything. So, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That should be our motto. And you know, Pentecost, the day which destroyed the spirit of fear. After that, otherwise, apostles, even after the resurrection, even after staying with Jesus three years, they were afraid. And they were hiding themselves in a room, afraid. To go out and after Pentecost what happened all the fear gone they are no more afraid and at the root of all fear can you say what fear is there fear of death yeah fear of death is at the root of all fear once the fear of death is gone all other fear that is the last enemy destroyed is death and when fear of death is there what will happen you will come under lifelong bondage Hebrews 2.15 and deliver all those who through fear of death were subjected to lifelong bondage through fear of death people were subject to lifelong bondage you know you come under a bondage you come under a bondage means flow of blessings will not be there under a bondage, always, you know, miseries will be there, afflictions will be there, destruction will be there, accidents will be there, sickness will not leave you. Reason? Fear of death. Lifelong bondage. Even now, so many people are lifelong bondage because of fear of death. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Do you have fear of death? Even though you say, no, many of you have fear of death. Say hallelujah. 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 Today morning I was praying, what should I preach today? Then very clearly Lord said, speak about death and let the fear of death go. And there will be a lot of deliverance. Once the fear of death goes, deliverance will come. Say hallelujah. 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 And see all these apostles, you know, they were all afraid and they all wanted there. That is why when after three years of staying with Jesus also, when Jesus was arrested, they all ran, ran for life. Because they were all afraid to die. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. But after Pentecost, the Pentecost made the difference. After Pentecost, they all came out. And they are all ready to die. No fear. 
that is why all these apostles they accepted death say hallelujah, yeah. hallelujah. they could avoid death if they want like you know <laughs> if they if they were not going around preaching they could save themselves but they were ready to die for example how all these people died you know all had very 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 painful death you know for example andrew andrew was uh, crucified how on a cross like x that is andrew's cross peter was crucified upside down crucified but upside down bartholomew you know bartholomew bartholomew was even eh, you know eh? Ah, yes. Beautiful. How you know? That's wonderful. When he was alive, you know, flayed alive with a knife, his skin was taken out. Can you imagine? But these people were praising God. They were not afraid. They could save themselves if they say that, you know, okay, we, we uh, no more preach and no more stand for Jesus. They could save themselves, but they were not afraid. His skin flayed alive when he was alive, you know, like that. Say, Hallelujah. hallelujah. And uh, James the elder, he was beheaded, you know, James the lesser, he was sewn into pieces alive with uh, this so, so what is that? Uh, uh, he was sewn into pieces like that when he was alive. That is, uh, James who has written this uh, letter of James that is James the lesser say hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Jude Tadeus you know Judas Tadeus Jude Tadeus you know he was killed with arrows and uh, you know Philip died by hanging and uh, uh, maybe Thomas you know with uh, a spear and uh, today is Matthews Matthews he was uh, crucified. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So all these people were ready to accept death. Because the fear of death was no more there. That is why they were all very courageous, joyful. And only such people can witness to the kingdom of God. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. And uh, all of us should be prepared for death. Especially... This is a time when we are living these days, I am telling you, you know, so many people are falling down and dying, you know, after COVID, you know, post-COVID time is a time where all of us should be prepared. Young ones are falling and dying, those who had no heart problem, complications, falling and dying. And so many, it is not one or two, okay. People, many whom I knew died, many. One of my companion who used to preach the word of God, husband, wife, both are good preachers, going around preaching. Few months back when he was preaching in Lithuania, an European country, one of the countries, Malayali from Kerala, but wonderful preachers, husband, wife committed to the cause of Christ. He was preaching the word of God, preaching a retreat and just fell down and died. He had no other complications. So, so many are dying. Are you prepared? Hallelujah. 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 Church is always asking us to be prepared and pray for happy death. Are you praying? Uh, we should be prepared for a happy death. And one of the daily prayers should be to get a good death. Why? Good death because call no one blessed because at death one is known how that person is that is why bible says call no one death before sirach 11 sirach 11 20 let me just see uh, 11 28 i think Uh, 1128 only. In certain translation, the translation will be different. But uh, uh, call no one happy before death because a man will be known in his death. 
हाँ मृत्यु के समय मनुष्य को पहचाना जाता है मृत्यु के पहले किसी को भाग्यशाली नहीं बोलना बिकॉज मृत्यु में आत्मी पहचाना जाता है सही हाल लोहिया सो कॉल नो वन ब्लसिड बिफोर डेथ इन डेथ A person is known. Say hallelujah. 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 And uh, you know, death, how you accepted death, how you were, you know, that shows that person, how a person is. Some people have beautiful death, you know, because a person who lived a life for christ will always have beautiful death means they will be prepared they will never have a, uh, without any preparation being in sin uh, dying and so on that will not happen that is why those people who have completed this uh, nine first friday devotion and so on jesus had promised he will not have a bad death means before uh, without uh, repentance and without uh, preparation you will not die so that's why those who have not completed nine first friday and so on start okay first friday devotion you know what it is like uh, consecration of uh, uh, the family and yourself to the sacred heart on first friday attending holy eucharist and receiving communion in grace nine consecutive first friday those who have not done that please try to do that and so on and also start praying daily for a good death and so on so hallelujah, hallelujah. praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah. hallelujah so psalm 90 verse 12 teach me to count the days of my life that i may have a heart of wisdom teach me to count the days of my life that i may have a heart of wisdom chapter 90 words 12 say hallelujah mujhe jeevan ki shan bhangurta sikha jisse mujh mein sadbuddhi aave teach me to count the days of my life that i may have a heart of wisdom say hallelujah that is why bible always says that you should think about your death remember death surah 28 6 remember the end of your life and cease from enmity Remember destruction and death and be true to the commandments 28:6 Remember death scripture is asking us to remember death say hallelujah hallelujah do not forget that death is nearby death can come to us any time so so be prepared surah 736 maybe 736 736 also 736 Seven, somebody can read 736 sirah in all you do remember the end of in all you do remember the end of your life and then you will never sin you will never sin say hallelujah hallelujah repeat this in all you do in all you do remember the end of your life then you will never sin then you will never sin hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord my father's elder brother one of the elder brothers so he died two years back he was he is in he was in usa a person who was committed to christ you know beautiful soul he was wherever he goes he was in trivandrum earlier there he started annual convention that that is now every year there is a big huge charismatic convention there anandapuri convention we call it after that he came to pala in a, in a, in kerala one another place there he started annual convention after that he went to chicago now he was in chicago there he started annual convention so his he was so committed to saving souls so much because of him i have gone and preached uh, he only took me first to usa and after that every year i had gone so many places which was so committed i had also devoted to the sacred heart and uh, last year you know um, uh, he he was uh, having some heart uh, his uh, 
uh, lungs problem. He was already 81, 82 and uh, he fell sick and uh, he was prepared well for death and he fell sick and uh, uh, he was in ventilator and the doctor said now there is no chance so you can take out. So all the family members, you know, the children and all grandchildren, all, all his children were, uh, you know, uh, Jesus youth full timers and uh, um, wonderful family, you know, father, son, brother. So all were committed, different parts of the world they are doing the wonderful ministries, all of them. So this Papa, my father's elder brother, so he was taken out from the uh, from the ventilator and uh, I was also joining for that prayer because all the family members were so he will die they said you know so all were I believe you know because he was well prepared and they were and uh, he did not die so I celebrated a mass online from uh, Kerala and from Manipur so and they all joined there like that for them for the family like that but after the ventilator, doctor said that he will die, but he is not dying, he did not die. Then seven more days, it was in the month of June, so seven more days was there for a uh, feast of uh, Sacred Heart. Then I felt like I told them, he may be waiting for a Sacred Heart feast because he was always, he was such a, a devotee of Sacred Heart. And you know, he waited. And on the feast of the Sacred Heart, solemnly gone. What a beautiful death it was. Seven days he waited for the uh, Because doctors were all wonderstruck. They said, you know, once you, you take out the ventilator, immediately he will die. That's why all the family members were waiting. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise so, this year, uh, last month, two months back, uh, uh, my father's younger brother, Okay, he was in Idiki. He was also a beautiful soul. You know, my, from my childhood, I used to see him going around. He's a charismatic <laughs> preacher and intercessor. intercessor. What he, his joy was to participate in uh, prayer groups, prayer prayer meetings, and he used to bring so many people and making them attend retreats and prayer. One who is never tired of praying. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. And he had a heart complaint all of a sudden and uh, taken to hospital before. And uh, he had a, an angiogram, an angioplasty. Uh, that time I had gone and uh, we prayed together and he went home like that after the operation. And so. so I went by. So last month what happened when I was not there with him. So I was in, in uh, UK. That time I couldn't reach also. So it so happened, one day he called the parish priest. He called the parish priest, uh, he said, uh, Father, long time you have not come home now, please come home. So why, what is special? No, simply you come. Like that. So parish priest went home and he was waiting at home with a big list of his sins, you know. <laughs> he had a, a thorough checkup of his whole life. And he made a beautiful confession. Later only we came to know the Irish priest was sharing all this. So he made a beautiful confession of all his life. He has returned out everything and he made a beautiful. And father was so much wonderstruck. And after that he talked with father, gave tea and father was going. That time father called one of his sons, you know, my cousin brother. Two sons are there. Said, what happened to Papa? Why he is making such a big confession and so on, especially he like, maybe he, he had a heart problem and so on last month and so on, so maybe like that. Now, but he is okay only, but he has no problem. Whatever it be, you know, once the parish priest reached his uh, home, you know, parish, by that time, this, my uncle had uh, some difficulty and uh, immediately rushed to the hospital and he was put in the hospital, that himself. And uh, he was in the hospital. And next day morning, parish priest already came to know that he is in the hospital. So before celebrating mass, this parish priest, 
So he was admitted in a hospital 25 kilometer from you know our house in Ponmudi in Nidiki one place and in a, in a place Adimari another place 25 kilometer far in the hospital this my uncle was. This parish priest early morning got up and he felt an inspiration you know I should go and visit him. Morning mass is there before that I can go and come back. He felt like his morning going you know without uh, he being invited there or uh, like that he went to the hospital and you won't believe you know in the hospital he went and pray he was praying over my uncle while praying and giving a blessing he died what a, what a death it is you know can you imagine that is it call no one blessed before death and death a person is known say hallelujah yeah. and uh, i could not reach i was in uk that time and uh, i was watching the live uh, of uh, his uh, uh, the burial and i found you know one priest came for prayer uh, before you know burial time you know before that we have this office of for the dead like that so many priests come and do one priest came and doing and that priest started crying. You know, usually we seldom find priest simply crying like now. So he started crying and he could not continue the prayer. And then he was taken like that. And somebody else came and continued the prayer. So I was so curious to know who is that priest, you know, who is not in our family, who can cry like that. Then I found out that he was the former parish priest of uh, the place. So a parish priest had so much love for a person when he died like that, you know. Later I talked to that parish priest, he said that, you know, he was such a nice soul that I could not control my sorrow that time was like. So like that, how, so such people will always get such a grace of a happy death. Say hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. And for that we should always be prepared. This. My uncle, when I was there a few months back home and he was telling me, our life any time can go, we need to be happy. I am so prepared. He was telling me joyfully, he was not at all afraid. He said that, uh, how I am waiting to meet my Lord like that. I remembered St. Paul is telling like, you know, St. Paul used to tell that. When St. Paul said, for example, in uh, uh, Philippians, you know, in his letter to Philippians, Chapter 1, we read like this beautiful chapter 1, verse 21. Philippians 1 21. For to me to live is Christ and to die is a gain. Die to die means a gain for me. For if it is to be life in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. I have some hard work, I have labor, I can work. But I am hard pressed between the two. My desire, my desire is to depart from the flesh and be with Christ. For that is far better. Say hallelujah. Meri ichcha hai, mein sharir se dur, prabhu ke saath raho. Hoi to sab se achcha hai. Say hallelujah. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. For your sake, some more time I had to be here so that I need to prepare you more. So, Lord may allow me to be here, but for me, what is my desire to go and be with Christ? See, how these people have lost fear of death. From jail only this man is writing, okay. And anything would happen to him anytime in jail when he was good. So, this man is writing for me. My desire is this, to be with Christ. Say hallelujah. Yeah. Dear ones, life is so temporary. Any time death can come. And are you prepared? Did you lay up sufficient treasure in heaven? If today you are called, what will happen to you? Are you prepared? Are you ready for Christ? Are you ready for heaven? Did you, do you think that you will have sufficient many more days left and so on? Say hallelujah. hallelujah. I live us every day as the last day. Like that. 
I am not boasting, but I tell you, I have no fear of death. Especially last one year, I have seen death several times like, you know, it's coming. Because when the firing was going on, I had to pass through. I literally, even the army people said, are you mad now coming? I said, I have to. <laughs> like that, in Manipur. Firing was going on between two parties just nearby and I had to. Because we had two retreat centers and I am the director of both the centers. And to go to the other center from the place where I live, we had to go through the place of firing and violence. One time our my car was completely damaged, you know, that's all. But we had to go through, we went and several people, because since I received a grace of uh, fearlessness and it was so easy to go, you know, because death for me is like a door, entering through a door, uh, that door is the death and through that we are entering to the room where Jesus is sitting and we will see him face to face in all his glory. What a beautiful thing it is. Death is that. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. And Hebrews 9.27 says, Hebrews 9.27, can anyone read? Hebrews 9.27, 9.27. Just as it is appointed for men to die once, after that comes judgment. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So now the problem is, are you prepared for judgment? Say hallelujah. 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 So there will be judgment and so on. And uh, but uh, judgment will be without mercy to those who have shown no mercy. That is why those people who are merciful, James chapter 2 verse 13, judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. But mercy triumphs over judgment. Mercy triumphs over judgment. If you, while here on earth, are full of compassion, you have nothing to be afraid. There can be imperfections, no worries. There can be past sins, don't worry. If you are merciful, he will receive mercy. Say hallelujah. Yeah. So that is the importance of mercy. Every day to everything you should be merciful. Merciful to every creature. Merciful to others. Merciful to your enemies. What is mercy? What is mercy? Mercy is not like, you know, not only like, you know, giving some money to a beggar. That everybody does. Say hallelujah. Yeah. What mercy is? Mercy has four steps. And uh, the scripture, Jesus revealed what mercy is. Uh, there are uh, some scripture scholars who say, who say that the ladder of mercy is described in chapter 6 of Luke. Chapter 6, 27, 28 are called the ladder of mercy. What is ladder of mercy? Four steps are there in mercy. The mercy which the Lord demands. That is called uh, uh, Luke 6, 27-28. I say to you that here, love your enemies. That is the first step. Okay, Love your enemies. Second, do good to those who hate you. Third, bless those who curse you. Fourth, pray for those who abuse you. Say hallelujah. 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 And a conclusion at the end of that verse 36. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. And in Matthew, same chapter, when in same uh, passage, when Jesus is explaining the same thing, there at conclusion, Jesus says, Be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. So how can you be perfect like heavenly father is perfect? Then you need to read it in Luke. Then same thing explained and afterwards conclusion is, Be perfect. Merciful just as Heavenly Father is merciful. So the perfection that Jesus demands is what? Perfection in mercy. That is this. The first level of uh, mercy, normal thing called mercy is this, you know, when someone is sick, take him to hospital or somebody is uh, thirsty or give some food or drink, someone is wounded, uh, you know, immediately intervene. And uh, someone whom you meet in the hospital, you are you should be merciful. A sick person, you should be merciful. Like that is that is everybody does. You know that's normal. 
But perfection in mercy, you know, is this. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Such people will have no worry about future. Because God's mercy will provide. Your imperfections, your sickness, your, your, your little bit of maybe the past sins and maybe some jealousy here, some words could not control and so on. Everything will be taken care of. If you have this mercy. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. But it's a beautiful grace, you know, that God gives. So once you have this mercy, na, then, then fear will vanish. You will not be afraid of death. See, when you are afraid of death because your soul is not ready for death. Sin is inside. Then soul knows that if I die, I am God. That's why fear will be there inside. But a person who is perfect, ready for Christ, with faith is there, hope is there, love is there. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Faith, hope and love for Christ. Then you are not afraid. So repeat this word of God. There is a ladder of mercy. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Love your enemies. Love, your enemies. love whom? Enemies. Oh, say hallelujah. hallelujah. So to grow in the mercy, to climb the ladder, uh, who should be there? Enemy should be there. So okay. So with, if enemies are not there, then how can you love your enemy? If you love those who love you, what merit is there? Jesus said, Yadi tu muni ko pyar karte jo aapko pyar karta hai, to puraskar ka dawa kaise kar sakta hai? How can you claim any reward if you love those who love you? Say hallelujah. Yeah. If your husband is perfect, if your wife is so perfect, if your children are so obedient and wherever you are working, those people are so appreciative of your work and no trouble you have, you will feel that oh, everything is okay, God is good. But the problem is, how can you practice mercy? And how can you be perfected in mercy? Say hallelujah. So love your enemies. Second, do good to those who hate you. So those people who are hating you are not a block. But they are a help for you to grow in compassion. So, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Doing good to those who are good to you are easy. Say hallelujah. So, do good to those who hate you. And third thing, bless those who curse you. So, cursing people are helping you to reach the third level. Say hallelujah. So when you bless them, so anyone who curses them, you should be blessing. Some people will be getting drunk and, and doing this and that, you know, you should be blessing them always. Pray. Hallelujah. So bless those who curse you and pray for those who abuse you. Abusive type of people are there. Abusive. Different way. Misunderstanding, speaking bad about you. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Little more louder. Hallelujah. 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 So pray for those who abuse you. Thus you will become children of God. So we should be preparing ourselves for death, for the days of death. Uh, because uh, last three years, I was just wondering, you know, three years back, uh, my father's eldest brother, he is a priest, he was a priest. He, because of him only, he was a great missionary. In, he lived all his life in the villages of Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh, working among Hindus, converting so many. And such a hard life he had. I used to wonder at him. His name also is Thomas Embray. So, Vincentian priest. He died three years back. And uh, that was because of his COVID he died. And that time I was near to his bed when he died. Uh, with the COVID kit and so on and so on. Like. I was in the hospital with him and I prayed over him before his death and he died. Such a great missionary. He died. And next year, uh, last year, my another papa's another brother died in America. This year, my father's youngest brother died. Now only my father left. Say hallelujah. <laughs> so I always ask him, are you ready now next year? <laughs> so, he said, he's, I'm ready now also, he says like that. So, so life is like that. People disappear all of a sudden. Uh, and, uh, you know, but these people who were so close to Christ and they had nothing to be afraid. They all had a beautiful death. I still remember my father, my father's father, 
how he died you know how such prepared death and father's mother they was they were loving so much so they wanted to die together like that and they died between just between 17 days gap <laughs> 17 days only april 1 uh, mummy died you know mother died and it, uh, 17 father died so both beautiful death because they were loving so much see such people all when i look back all the people who had been close to christ and were not afraid of death they all had a beautiful death say hallelujah and i uh, this particular thing you won't believe uh, now i shall explain one one, one another incident you know i uh, grew up in a place called kanyikuri in idukki in kerala like that okay so now we are in bharanagyanam another place but that time in my childhood uh, i still remember uh, i had only three friends with whom i could i could talk like one was my best friend one friend siju his name his brother was uh, uh, a very saintly person in our time so he was going to church every day like that and so on he was just two years senior to me and uh, he joined seminary he wanted to go on die for christ like that so he joined for jammu kashmir rise that time uh, so much a problem place was jammu okay srinagar and so on so he wanted to go and join there where more problems are there so he went there so i was in uh, eighth class when he joined uh, after 10th he joined for seminary okay so after two years when i finished 10th i also joined so i went to madhya pradesh that time say hallelujah. hallelujah so this man you know he, he uh, his name was biju uh, kuri kattil his uh, 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 after joining seminary we used to call him matthew matai so his name was matthew so he was about to be ordained in 2000 year 2000 he was about to be ordained he was a deacon and uh, that time all of a sudden he got sick and found out that both his kidneys are gone and doctors gave him maximum 3 month it was a big shock you know and the kidney cannot be transplanted because several times he had jaundice and so on and bilirubin was so high in his blood and the doctors said now uh, there is no chance of uh, uh, transplant also so he has to die no other way so he was flown from uh, jammu to uh, kerala and he was in uh, kochi lisi hospital and he was dying so his last wish was i want to become a priest before i die so uh, in the hospital in year 2000 uh, in the hospital uh, his because his studies everything was over he was a deacon so uh, only few more months left so in the hospital ordination ceremony bishop peter salas uh, i think uh, yeah peter had come from uh, jammu and he was a capuchin bishop yeah so, so he had come and uh, they were giving he was being ordained and i still remember uh, he was sitting he cannot stand and the world swollen up like you know like that. and he was receiving the priesthood ordination and all were crying even doctors nurses and this because we know that he is going to die uh, and uh, and his mummy his mummy and my mummy and they were very, very good thick friends in prayer group they used to go and intensify like that so i still remember when uh, uh, and this mummy was very joyful you know courageously standing she was the only one no tears she was courageously standing there by the side of her, her son papa died you know papa was not there so this mummy was standing when in the side of a sun like that and uh, that night i met her uh, talking uh, like that he was telling you know bobby uh, that time i was in the seminary theology so he was asking me told me years back my son was ah uh, no uh, 10 years back he was already 10 or 11 years 11 years back my son was taken uh from my hand by the lord so even if he dies also that is for the lord but he will live more <laughs> she has courage 
and uh, confidence and he will, he will live to serve like that and uh, a beautiful uh, mother you know so uh, her faith is so strong whatever it be after the ordination what happened you know there happened a miracle miracle was this that you know this this person became better you know he started started getting up started walking like that and so on so after almost 3 months also he is not dying he is okay now better by that time doctors were that something is happening now if you get a, a kidney and so on, we can transplant like that so immediately his sangal or someone gave a kidney and a transplantation there was and he became well and he became the parish priest of srinagar you know srinagar uh, that is a very difficult place and there is a church catholic church in srinagar city srinagar and he was the parish priest for next 9 years say ha say ha say hallelujah <laughs> and in his time two times i went and preached the convention in srinagar one time i still remember i had an, a, a, i could not forget that memory when we went there there was a time when that time pope uh, benedict 16 spoke something against uh, the prophet and the people were so angry and uh, we saw uh, people muslims mostly there they were going everywhere violent with the photo of a pope and a burning and so on that was the time when we landed up there and uh, because of this matthew matthew he was so well known there and we got almost 100 army people around the church for 3 days protection and uh, the uh, for the retreat and it was a beautiful time and uh, the army personnel heard the word of god many came for a uh, uh, healing prayer over them like that and uh, i cannot forget that uh, memory of uh, praying over the army people because they heard in those standing outside because they have to stand all the day and they are hearing all the word of god that is preached there like that and so the beautiful thing. and this man was doing that and what happened after that when he was the parish priest one time he had to come to delhi while coming coming down he had met with another accident a car accident and uh, in the car accident he got paralyzed this so matthew became paralyzed uh, and he was bedridden okay so he was bedridden for the next 5 years bedridden and is such a beautiful suffering you know he used to be very joyful i have all his photos and so on and uh, what i want to tell is i used to sometimes visit him like that in jammu in the hospital he was but a very holy priest okay and joyfully accepting sufferings and you won't believe now what i want to tell is you know you should believe since the father is speaking from the altar you can believe that it is not not even anything is added to it it really happened and uh, uh sometimes people fail to believe such a thing can happen or not like that one day he is giving me a call bobby where are you so i am i was in assam that time i want to meet you come then next day i flew to jammu and i met him and one day i stayed with him and we were praying together talking and i said why did you call me i just felt like seeing you how things are you know childhood memory and everything and he said he was so joyful and i said how are you carrying out all these things you know i'm doing reparation for the sins of so many <laughs> lying down and uh, then i reminded him about uh, um, one word of god from uh, uh, ezekiel chapter 4 words for the lord asked uh, ezekiel to lie down for some time as long as you are lying down i will keep the sins of these people on you जब तक तू लेटे रहेगा लोगों के पाप में तुम्हारे ऊपर रखा रहूंगा सो यू हैव टू कीप ऑन लाइंग ऑन साइड आफ्टर फ्यू डेज द लॉर्ड सेट टेन टू द अदर साइड नाउ कीप ऑन लाइंग लाइक दैट सो दिस पीपल हैव टू गो एंड लाइन आउट लाइक दैट सो एंड द लॉर्ड सेट एज लॉन्ग एज यू आर लाइंग डाउन आई विल कीप द सिंस ऑफ दीज पीपल ओन यू यू कैन यू that is reparation you know that is it. so i reminded him and he liked that word of god so much ah, that's what without knowing this also i was doing this he was telling me that i am every day doing you know penance for the sins like that 
and i came back and there was another priest also from idki from kanyakuri same place they were friends so atikel one another also was there so we uh, three of us met together and i stayed with him next day i came back and you know after meeting me next week this matthew is telling his companion priest companion priest now he says i want to go i am ready to go i said where do you want to go you don't know i am about to go i want to go to the lord and he said that you are not the one deciding don't speak such things like that he said no you make a preparations what preparation is it for now you have to prepare everything i am ready to so that time you know he was okay like thing you know only thing is last four years is lying down and in the hospital hospital by our sisters so they are well they are taking care of him and there is no serious thing but this man says i am going and you know he is telling next week there is a recollection of the fathers uh, that recollection is uh, wednesday and he says tell them to stay one more day all the fathers for my sake and he could not believe that so it is communicated to bishop and uh, uh, things were told uh, and they first they thought that it is all joke he is telling but he was very serious and you know that recollection day he have made a beautiful confession he had asked the fathers to stay so after the recollection most of the fathers came to the hospital and so on met him and uh, prayed with him and so on and uh, he was so joyful and uh, next day he asked them to stay one more day like that no? so and the next day he was so so many people were in this room continuously praying because they all thought that something is going to happen because he said already no? and uh, he was going on praying praying all were praying and it was bishop also bishop by that time could not walk by himself so he wanted a help like that he was now that bishop is not there so it it happened just 5 years by 3 4 4 5 years back what happened like that i have all the photos of that thing like that so what happened is bishop is sitting outside the room inside the room prayer is going on sisters are there priests are there taking turn and praying praying with him and he is also praying he he after receiving communion and so on he closed his eyes matthew and then uh, keep on praising praising uh, praising like that and people waited 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 nothing happening like that no so uh, he keep on praising sometime he just got sleep but again he start praising sometimes he goes through some pain so much of pain like that excruciating pain in between but again comes to peace like that long time bishop was sitting outside after some time bishop said take me inside okay so bishop had the help of someone and they holding this hand he went inside and you won't believe bishop prayed over matthew that moment he died say hallelujah and that night you know i was there so uh, that night i met with this bishop you know peter celestine and that bishop said something which i want to tell you and bishop said i knew he matthew was a saint and uh, he had not taken any decision without telling me okay and uh, that day when he got accident also he had asked me whether i can come down i only permitted him then only he traveled and he never goes anywhere without telling me and uh, i was sitting waiting waiting because he said that he will go i knew that it was a revelation to him because he was a say and now i was waiting long time then he is not going then only i remembered he will not go without getting my permission and that's why i went and i blessed him gave permission that moment he went what a beautiful thing can you imagine that's called death say hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah and this bishop said last four years when he was lying bishop house and hospital hospital four kilometer difference only and he said whenever i was in the city i made sure daily i visit him four kilometers traveling bishop saying 
that I visit every day because I knew that he is a saint. And whenever I take any decision, first I go and tell him. <laughs> he was telling Bishop was telling. So, what a beautiful thing, you know. During his burial time, one priest, you know, after the burial, priest were coming and uh, telling something, you know. So, one priest came, one of his companion, to speak about this priest and uh, he could not speak anything. He was just too weepy. Then he said only one thing. Saint Matthew of Jammu, pray for me, pray for us. <laughs> and he came out. So that is it, you know, even when he was alive, that those people who accept the suffering willingly, they become perfect, lacking in nothing. That is why James chapter 1, verse 2 and 3, that is one of the beautiful word of God I love so much. Uh, James chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. Can someone read that? James chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. James. Somebody help her read, read. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, ah. consider it nothing but joy. My brothers and sisters, when you are, whenever you face any trials of different kind, consider it as joy. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Because you know testing of your faith produces endurance. Ah. Let endurance have its full effect. Let endurance carry you all along. Certain translation is, let endurance carry you all along. Or let endurance have its full effect. Then, so ah. mature, mature and complete, complete lacking, in lacking in nothing. Say hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Complete, mature, lacking in nothing. Such people when they die, they don't have any more purification needed, no purgatory needed. They will be directly going to heaven. They are saints. Say hallelujah. Yeah. They will do miracles. They will perform wonders. Those who accepted sufferings joyfully. They are not afraid of death anymore. So that is why St. Paul says, we have good courage. Second Corinthians 5, 8. Uh, Second Corinthians 5.8. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that is a beautiful sentence okay so if I one onwards I shall read for we know that if the earthly tent we live in it is destroyed we have a building from God a house not made with hands eternal eternal in the heavens say hallelujah hallelujah 2 Corinthians 4 16 onwards we read so we do, we do not lose heart Though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed every day. <coughs> for this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Because we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Now, chapter 5, verse 1. For we know... If the earthly tent we live in are destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands. So this earthly tent, earthly tent, this body in which we live will be destroyed. But we have a house, a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal. Say hallelujah. 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 For while we are still in this tent, we sigh with anxiety, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So that is the Holy Spirit as the guarantee, taking away all the fear. Holy Spirit is the guarantee that we have eternal life. Holy Spirit is the guarantee that we have a new house prepared. It is going to come. And when Holy Spirit is there, that guarantee is there. The proof is this, you will not have fear of death. Say hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Proof of Holy Spirit coming is that fear of death will not be. All the fear will go. You will not be afraid. We are afraid of everything. Chitti is a dartha, chipkali is a dartha. And even the small, small things, we are afraid of everything. All the fear will go. That is the guarantee. Because so, verse 6. 
so holy spirit is a guarantee and after that so we are always of good courage we know that while we are at home in the body we are away from the lord for we walk by faith not by sight hum aankhon dekhi baaton par nahi chalta hum vishwas pe chalta hai we walk by we are led by faith not by sight we are of good courage that we would rather be away from the body and at home with the lord so whether we are at home or away we make it our aim to please god because we must all appear before the judgment seat of god so that each one may receive good or evil according to what he has done in the body say hallelujah, hallelujah. so what a beautiful thing we have good courage we have no fear we have good courage say hallelujah so that is why people we we should not be conformed to the world romans 12 to romans chapter 12 verse 2 says romans 12 to i appeal to you words 12 1 and 2 i appeal to you brothers and sisters by the mercy of god to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to god which is your spiritual worship do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may prove what is the will of god what is good and acceptable and perfect say hallelujah, hallelujah. do not be conformed to this world always worried about uh, health worried about uh, you know future worried about uh, studies worried about money worried only about getting good uh, what is that good job and uh, only this how long will you be worldly like this buggers always asking for give me this give me that give me that are you asking for uh, some uh, you know uh, grace of good death say hallelujah so the problem is how long will you be buggers asking for this and that all the worldly things only set your minds on things there is a beautiful word of god where is that uh, colossians colossians i just remembered i'll find out colossians 3 3 2 ha 3 2 uh, repeat this after me colossians 3 2 set your minds on things that are above set your minds on things that are above not on things that are on earth stand up stand up and repeat this word of god please stand please stand this is a very important word of god we are going to by heart now everyone say hallelujah hallelujah set your minds on things that are above set your minds on things that are above not on things that are on earth not on things that are on earth colossians 3 2 colossians 3 colossians 3 2 set your minds on things that are above set your minds on things that are above not on things that are on us not on things that are on us set your minds on things that are above set your minds on things that are above not on things that are on us not on things that are on earth set your minds on things that are above set your minds on things that are above not on things that are on earth not on things that are on earth learn colossians 3 colossians 3 hallelujah by the merit of this word of god we receive the grace to set our minds on things that are above say amen amen sing once again set your minds on things that are above not on things that are on earth not on things that are on earth say hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord be seated set our minds on things that are above say hallelujah 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 so we are of good courage we are of good courage say hallelujah in revelation chapter 
we read like this revelation i think 1413 i think 1413 can you read 1413 and i heard a voice from heaven ah write this ah. blessed are those the weak the dead blessed are the dead ah. who from now on die in the lord ah ha yes says the spirit yes they will rest from their labors ah. and their deeds follow them deeds follow blessed are the dead who die in the lord blessed are they their deeds will follow them say hallelujah yes. so any good deed will follow us any good deed whatever you have given will follow the time you have given will follow the money that you have given away will follow you even a glass of water that you have given you will be rewarded that is why lay up treasures in heaven say hallelujah hallelujah once you are convinced of this thing you know how much you will be generous you know because whatever you keep it will be lost whatever you give away is a blessing it will be staying with you so that is why st paul is very much teaching about importance of giving 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 like that say hallelujah. hallelujah and he is telling don't think that you know i am teaching about giving because i am interested in taking away your money no but i am interested that you should have so much in your account when you die hindi mein translation bahut acha hai main aapka dhan paane ke liye utsuk nahi hu balki isliye utsuk hu ki aapke khate mein jama baaki badhta jaye aapke khate mein jama baaki badhta jaye that there be uh in english how it is let me find out it is from uh, philippians uh, it is from philippians so uh, it's 417 not that i seek your gift but i seek the fruit which increases to your credit in your translation anyone uh, for philippians 417 philippians 417 not because i receive a gift but i receive fruit that may abound to your account ah abound your account any other version other version other translation also Philippians 417 somebody else also 417 not but that, not ah. that the ah. the ah the profit that accumulates your account say hallelujah. hallelujah so when you are giving profit is being accumulated to your account when you stand in front of the lord this will be your account you know your, your account will be taken out and there will be so much in your account so i am interested in this that is why i teach you give 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 for example second corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 onwards the point is this he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully it's all about uh, giving only he is teaching in that chapter then verse 7 each one must do as he has made up his mind not reluctantly or under compulsion for god loves a cheerful giver repeat god loves a cheerful giver god loves a cheerful giver hallelujah khushi se dene walon ko prabhu pyar karta hai say god loves a cheerful giver god is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance so that you may always have enough for everything and may provide uh, and may provide in abundance for every good work say hallelujah words then he who supplies he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your resources and increase the harvest of your righteousness say hallelujah hallelujah one thing i noticed is those people who are seeking the treasure in heaven will be always generous they will be always how i can help i know a, a lady uh, she is a, she is a assamis Uh, uh and uh, she now she is a uh, italian citizen but lives in uh, lives in uh, in uh, in, uh, in uh, kolkata uh, victoria didi victoria so she used to tell me and she gives so much i know she goes around giving all his wealth like that everywhere she goes help her like and how she helped us so much i cannot imagine many lakhs she has 
help you know she whatever money she has she and one day she told me now we are making houses she is uh, making almost for five houses she is the one making five houses that means five and uh, 25 lakhs uh, uh, she is giving and making houses for the poor people <coughs> she says she was telling me once father i make sure if i die i should not have so much in my earthly account here so that i may have to give account to the lord saying when i entrusted you so much and why you did not distribute because this money is for distribution of the poor and people i entrusted you i cannot keep it and if i die what will happen i have to give account so that is why i make sure that i give sufficiently every day so she goes around she she was an orphan she was an orphan father and mother died and she was taken care by one bishop marengo and uh, uh, she has a beautiful life story say hallelujah. hallelujah and she got a job she was a typist and uh, she got later a job and in the later she she since she was so generous from the beginning you know and uh, lord took her up like she got a job in the uh, italian embassy and uh, children are now in america and many places like that so whatever she has she is going around giving like that and she only told me that I, I make sure that I should not have so much wealth here by the time I die, like that. Another man whom I remember is Anthony Chaco, such a great man, one, one, one boy from Kerala. He used to go around as a missionary in Arunachal Pradesh. Because of him only, we started our mission in Arunachal Pradesh. So he was going over so much interested. So he was unmarried and he was giving away. So he had his land in Angamali and Aulam and that was taken away by railway. So he got some three crore or something because of this. All the money he had used for the missions. He comes and he helps here, there to do this church, do that one, that village church, like that and helping. And all the money he has given, then he had a, a liver failure or a, a kidney or kidney or liver or from failure and he died two years back like that. But he has done amazing work. And how these people are setting their minds on things that are above. Say hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 And Psalm 116, 15, you know all that you should never forget. 116 words 15. Psalm 116, 15. Can you read? Ah, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful people. Faithful people. Those who are faithful to the Lord, precious in the sight of the Lord, their death. Say hallelujah. So, if that death is precious in the sight of the Lord, heaven will rejoice. That's why when someone was dying, you know, Stephen, a faithful man, dying, and Jesus stood up there. That is why uh, there only we find, you know, Jesus standing at the right side of the Father. What? Otherwise, he is seated. Uh, seated only but there it is knowingly written Jesus stood up this is not a simple thing you know Holy Spirit is revealing every word in the Bible is uh, revealing the mysteries of the kingdom say hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise, the Lord. praise the Lord hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 somebody read Acts of the Apostles 7 7 7 55 55 56, 56, 56. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Ah, Son of Man standing. See, otherwise, all other places, wherever it is described about Jesus, it is seated only. Son of Man seated. Only here. Because one man is dying here. And it is precious in the sight of the Lord. Jesus stood up to welcome him. That is the thing. That is standing ovation only. Heaven honors the death of faithful people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I, I used to uh, rejoice so much reading this. Son of man standing at the right hand. Oh, I should also get this grace when I die. The Lord will stand. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we should be faithful. Holy thing. And don't be afraid. Afraid to die. Death is the moment of 
grace. That is why, you know, uh, Ecclesia, Ecclesia asked us 7 1. Ecclesia asked us 7 1. Sabha Prasanga, oh, that is uh, Ecclesia asked us. Yeah, Ecclesia asked us 7 1. Can you read? Find out. Ecclesia asked us. Ah. ah, day of death is better than the day of uh, birth. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Ah, day of death is better than the day of uh, birth. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. And that is why we should not be people lamenting at the death of people and so on. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. We will have some sorrow because we will miss them. But we should rejoice. Rejoice in our faith. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. And we should all remember, you know, death. we are all refugees here on earth. See, refugees, how many times the Bible says that we are refugees, we are refugees, we are, we are exiles. See, is there anyone sitting who is a, 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 a Kuwaiti citizen here? Anyone? Nobody here. So, you are all exiles. Okay, now you will understand. So, you are all exiles here. Now you know that you are refugees, exiles. And... Uh, you all like, do you like to go back home? You know, when, for example, you are going for holidays, you know, somebody said to me today while logging, Father, I'm, I'm so happy today because tomorrow, or day after tomorrow, he's preparing to go home. So, so, very happy. Going home is always a joyful thing. Okay. Going home is a joyful thing. Preparing, that should be for us. We are all exiles here on earth. As long as you are here on earth, we are exiles. Read 1st Peter 2.11. 1st Peter 2.11. Yeah. Somebody else also read? Same thing? As uh, I urge you, urge you as aliens, aliens and exiles. exiles. You are aliens and you are exiles. So I urge you. What you should do? To abstain, abstain from the desires, of flesh, desires of flesh that is that waging war against your soul. soul. Desires of flesh is waging war against your soul. So abstain from them. Because you are aliens and exiles, any time you will be asked to vacate. Any time you will be asked to vacate, you have no citizenship here. Any time you have to go, any time war can happen, any time a new rule can come, any time call will come, go. Leave the place. Time is over. Say hallelujah. So you should abstain from these desires of the flesh. Say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What are the desires of the flesh? Laziness, lust, gluttony. Say, hallelujah. Yeah. Laziness and lust and gluttony are desires of the flesh. Lazy, lust, gluttony. Say, hallelujah. Yeah. Most of us are, you know, somehow addicted to any of these things. You know, once it comes, laziness comes, Lust will never go. Laziness and lust are interconnected. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are addicted to mobile, you will fall into sexual sin. Whether you believe it or not, whether you want it or not. Without your knowledge, you will fall. If you are addicted to mobile, pornography will come soon. If you are addicted to watching some serials, impure thoughts will soon attack you because laziness and lust are interconnected. If you have the habit of sleeping more, if you have the habit of not getting up early morning, you will soon fall into sexual sin. Either it is immodest desire, impure desires, masturbation tendencies, pornographic addiction, and evil thoughts, evil fantasies, sexual disturbances will be always there, temptations will be more because laziness and lust are interconnected. That's why I always tell, David slept a little more when he was supposed to go for work. Bible says it was time for him to go for the battle, but he slept. He sent all others for the work and he stayed and that day he slept more. And Bible says evening time he got up from the bed and he walked for and he went for an evening walk 
then only he fell into sexual sin. Otherwise, such a prayerful man is not supposed to fall into adultery. He fell into adultery because of his laziness. Anyone who is lazy, however prayerful you, whether you are a bishop or priest or sister or whoever, if you are lazy, if you have the habit of procrastination, if you have the habit of uh, laziness, laziness is manifested in two ways mainly. One is procrastination and another is uh, disorder in life. Disorder, disorder, disorder. If laziness is there, you will surely have disorder. Room will be messy. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I saw one boy, you know, his room was so messy when I happened to enter like that. Then I asked him, what is this you are keeping everything messy? I am a fan of Messi. So, <laughs> Messi is a, is a footballer. So, he was a fan of Messi. So, he is keeping everything messy like that. So, some people are like that. You know, that is a very clear sign of the spirit of, uh, spirit of, uh, spirit of laziness. Laziness is there, then things will be always, always a mess. Praise the Lord. Praise so, 1 Corinthians 14.40, you should not forget 14.40. 14, 14.40. Do. Ah, read. Chauda Chalice. 14.40. 14. 14. 14. 14. 40. Ah. 1440. 14. Chapter 14. Words 40. Uh, let all things be done decently and in order. Lift your right hand. Let all things be done decently, decently and in order. And in order. Hallelujah. 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 Hands down. So those people who are not keeping things in order, don't think that Holy Spirit will work in you. No. Because Holy Spirit is the spirit of order. Where Holy Spirit is there, there is order. Very clear it is. Those who have disorder in life, you should repent and ask for Holy Spirit. If Holy Spirit comes, you will be having a spirit of order. So children, when they start becoming, you know, disordered life, very clear sign, losing an anointing. Morning, getting up and not preparing your bed, keeping your bed just like that and going. It's a very clear sign that you are worshipping the spirit of disorder, evil spirit of laziness. Morning itself you are worshipping and uh, sacrificing, giving a sacrifice to the evil spirit of laziness and going. Then that day don't think that you will be pure. If laziness is honoured, then lust will, without your permission, will enter. Without your permission. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. It's always like that. You can check. Where laziness is there, you, without your permission, you will fall into sexual sins. If you want to control sexual sin, first deal with the laziness. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. So we are, so I appeal to you, I appeal to you because you are a, you are, uh, what is that, uh, you are a migrant, you are a, you are a, uh, you, what is the other word? Refugee or uh, or exile. Uh, Hebrews chapter uh, 11 words, uh, there is also a, uh, somewhere it is that because, uh, let me find out. In chapter 11, um, 13, these all died in faith, not having received what was promised, but having seen it, greeted it far from far, having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth, about our forefathers. They acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on earth. For people who speak thus, make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. So when you know that you are an exile, you know that you are seeking, you are seeking a homeland. Say hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, chapter 13, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 14. Here we have no lasting city. We seek the city which is to come. So through him let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips acknowledging his name. So we have no lasting city here on earth. So we should continually give thanks and praise. Say hallelujah. 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 Another beautiful sentence is from Philippians. Philippians, St. Paul is writing 
to Philippians. Philippians is just before Colossians and just after Ephesians. So Philippians chapter 3 to Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3 words 20, 20. But our commonwealth, our citizenship is in heaven and from it we await a savior, Lord Jesus Christ who will change our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power which enables him even to subject all things to himself. But those people who do not have these things, those who are not acknowledging that your commonwealth, your citizenship is in heaven, such people about them, St. Paul says, verse 18, for many of whom I have often told you, now I tell you even with the tears, they leave as enemies of the cross of Christ enemies of the cross of Christ, their end is destruction, but their God is their belly. They, they glory in their shame with the mindset on earthly things. They live for food, their God is belly. They live for drinks, they live for eating and drinking and merry making. And they, are, they, they have no fasting. That is why against they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Remember cross, the crucified savior, he did not eat anything, he did not drink and he was fasting. So crucified Savior, you remember. So those who are afraid of fasting and prayer, they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Never making any fasting. No abstinence. No abstinence. Even for Lent, they have no Lent and no abstinence. Friday or whatever it be. So they have no fasting, no abstinence. No abstinence. And they are, they, are, they are enemies of the cross of Christ. They, they live for their belly. They glory in things, you know, drinking and uh, things. They are heroes in drinking wine and so on. Some people are there. About whom word of God very clearly says, end is destruction. End is destruction. Uh, Isaiah chapter 5. Chapter 5. Chapter 5. Words 22. Woe to those who are heroes at drinking wine. And that valiant, valiant men in mixing strong drinks. Mixing strong drinks means this, uh, this uh, cocktail, mocktail party people. Some are very expert in those things. So, Bible says, woe to them who are heroes in drinking wine. And they are glorifying, they are taking glory in that partying and so on. Say hallelujah. 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 What will happen to them? Verse 24. Therefore, as the tongue of the fire devours the stubble, as dry grass sinks down in the flame, so their root will be as rottenness, their blossom go up like dust, for they have rejected the law of the Lord of hosts and have despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. So they have so much of uh, drinks and uh, 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 verse 12, chapter 5, verse 12. They have lyre and harp, timbrel and flute and wine at their feast. They are always partying. Birthday celebration, this celebration. And even Holy Communion also they have wine and drinks and so on like that. So for they do not regard the deeds of the Lord. They don't have any regard for the work of the Lord. They don't see the work of his hands. But they celebrate their feast with a lot of wine and eating and drinking and merry making. Verse 11, Woe to those who rise early in the morning so that they may go after strong drink. Or they stay late into the evening till wine inflames them. Woe to them. Woe to them. So such people, they are setting their minds on things that are here. Worldly things. And so what will happen? Just as the tongue of fire, fire devours the stubble. As dry grass sinks down in the flame, so their root will be as rottenness. So destruction it is. So about them only Bible says, I with the tears speak about them. They are in this destruction. They leave us enemies of the cross of Christ. They forget that our citizenship is not here. They forget about death. They are thinking that they have many more years left here on earth to live. Say hallelujah. They forgot. Jesus said that I have, we have many rooms in my father's prepare room and I will come and I will take you. Be prepared. Be ready. I have gone. So where I am, there my, my people also. You should also be. Your place is there where I am. I will come. Once room for you is ready, I will come and take you. John chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So hallelujah. hallelujah. 
so that is our real home is that real home is this so leviticus 25 23 is land cannot be sold in perpetuity only can be leased land cannot be sold in perpetuity as for example for you cannot uh, 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 buy land here because you are not citizen that is why land cannot be sold in perpetuity because land belongs to me only so you are refugees here on earth 25 23 you are refugees here on earth that is why you cannot sell you cannot buy land here in perpetuity you cannot own up land so in in, in the world you cannot own up land because you do not belong here your land is there so here you can just lease out for some time don't think that you have this much in your account and this land is yours today if you die what will happen you think that you know you are rejoicing in your bank account that that much money is there you whether you will use it that way that way today night if an attack happens what will happen to you because you have no guarantee how many days are left in your account i still remember last month when i was in in in, in london i met a family carolite family that man came to me so he was so much sad about his brother in kerala they had some land and that man wanted to take up all the land you know that this this man who is in london he has one or two acres of land and other uh, thing is managed by his own brother there are two brothers only say hallelujah. hallelujah two brothers only so he was fighting so much you know last time when they were at home they had a big fight and this man wanted to one who is at home his younger brother wanted to beat this elder brother because he wanted that land he is saying that you are there in london now why should you keep this land land is mine you t- you give me like that so he wanted to keep that one or two acres only because he has uh, two three children so he said you know we do not know that. that's why i kept it i did not give him the entire land and he was fighting i i told him see that is he is fighting because he doesn't know that he thinks that he will live so many years if what will happen tomorrow do not know i just told him like that but you know that man who had beaten the brother and so on you know it so happened i could not believe you know afterwards i am so afraid even to tell such things like that now this man last uh, last week before i coming here uh, uh, before i left manipur i got a phone call from this person he said father and he was crying and he said something happened to my brother all of a sudden he fell and he is in on ventilator and his uh, internal organs all failed he had no problem all of his uh, internal organs all failed see after covid medicine covid vaccine and so on now people any time people are falling down internal organs will fail that happened to him now he is in the ventilator and he came yesterday he called and doctors had asked him you know you can take back and uh, you know for burial you know if you want we can keep uh, more days with the ventilator but uh, there is no hope at what's wrong see people are only this much this man last a few months back fighting against his brother for uh, land where is he that is human life so so thing is this like that you know those people who forget about this they will be fighting for this and that and so on say hallelujah and you forget that you know your days are counted that is why bible says think about death think about the death say hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 we are supposed to return back you know when you have a debt for example when you have a debt you know many of you came here because to solve you know to 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 pay back your debt and so on you know may, we had so much of financial debt you know unless and until that debt is over we are not at peace hame sukoon nahi milta hai jab tak hame dusron se humne jo udhar liya hai paisa jab tak nahi deta we will be you know thinking about that how can i return back so that i may have some freedom say hallelujah, hallelujah. then now we should never forget Uh, uh that something is to be returned you know wisdom 15 that gives the answer you know book of wisdom i read it you know i like that sentence so much book of wisdom book of wisdom wisdom i let me find out chapter 15 i read it for you um, man 15 words 8b 
this man who was made of earth a short time before after a little while goes to the earth from which he was taken when he is required required he is required to return the soul that was lent him say hallelujah what is the word used there is there lent is there borrow ah that was ah oh, soul is borrowed to you it is lent to you say hallelujah and we are supposed to return it back we are supposed to return the soul that is lent to you and until that is going back you know that is the given back safe and sound we should not rest we our main concern should be to return the soul just as he has given me pure soul innocent soul holy soul now on the soul so much of you know impurities have come because from the world we are downloading this and this and that and so much of virus is entering into the soul say hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. so anyone who is downloading from the world you know through the eyes and so on without some anti what is that in the system we have anti virus <laughs> okay so without the anti anti virus is the holy spirit okay anointing the anointing keeps you away from sin the, without this anti virus you know anti virus that is that uh, that that anointing without the anointing if you see anything there will be lot of virus entering into the system every fiber of your body will be controlled by these viruses anything you look at anyone if anointing is not there all these things will you know enter so much of virus will enter into the system body mind and soul say hallelujah that is why that is why many of us you know cannot pray cannot spend time in joy and peace because our system is affected infected and you know when your when when a computer or a system is or a mobile is uh, and you know affected or with the virus then it shows certain thing first thing is you know it uh, it uh, starts hanging you know phone hangs for example it is supposed to do certain work will not for example what you are supposed to accomplish in one year 10 years it will take the blessing which you are supposed to get in in this month it may take 10 months because it's hanging phone is hanging it's not working say hallelujah another thing is that many thing will be deleted you know some memory will be gone so if virus senders means so many things that god has accomplished in you you will forget the memory in the memory that is not there it is deleted say hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. so the virus is doing those things and mainly this viruses are you know laziness lust gluttony jealousy and anger and greed and pride there are seven major viruses say hallelujah, hallelujah. and laziness and lust and gluttony affect the body jealousy and anger affects mind greed and pride directly affects the soul pride and greed directly affects the soul that is why anyone who has greed they have nothing to do with the prayer and anything bible says piety of course religion of course brings great gain but only to those who are satisfied with what they have that means if greed is there piety has nothing to do with